What's up everybody, welcome back to the KS Moto Cafe, the channel where you get the latest scoop on the Harley Davidson motorcycles. As I predicted numerous times on this channel, Harley Davidson is finally parting ways with the Evolution Sportster and is starting a new book of Sportsters with their new liquid cooled Revolution Max engine. Now, I know most of you guys who are watching this have already seen a lot of the same clips over and over again with the same data specs read over by other YouTubers. So I'll avoid doing that. What I'll provide in this video is my likes and dislikes of the bike based on what I've seen on the Sportster S reveal video and possibly provide some details that you may have missed on your first watch. So let's start with the basics. What do I like? I like that the Sportster family is finally getting a six speed transmission because historically it's always been the five speed. I like that the performance specs is very respectable. At 121 horsepower and 94 foot-pounds of torque, it can definitely compete with the Indian Scout, Honda Rebel 1100, and even the Ducati X Diavel. I like the overall look of the bike. It seemed like a product of a mix between a Milwaukee 8 Fat Bob, Sportster XR Flat Track, Pan America, and the V-Rod. I like that it's getting a TFT display that has Bluetooth and a map display, but also retaining that single round display that the current Sportsters have. I like that Harley is finally putting LEDs in every single light because it's been long overdue. I like that it's 60 pounds lighter than the Iron 883. I like that the color scheme is mixing in the bronze. I like that it comes with four controls as stock. However, if you like the mid controls, there's already an option for you to purchase an aftermarket mid control from Harley Davidson. And I like that the lean angle is 34 degrees, which is six degrees more than my Iron 83. But now let's get on to the stuff that I don't like about the bike. I have concerns about the stock seat. The padding looks very similar to the one from the Livewire. And if I remember correctly, when I was test riding the Livewire, my tailbone hurt quite a bit after a few hours of riding. Based on the current design of the bike, I just can't see too many aftermarket parts that will solve the issue without compromising the overall look of the bike. I have concerns with the controls. It looks identical with the one that's on the Pan America, which means there will be a lot of buttons. After test riding the Pan America a few weeks back, I can tell you that I'm more of a fan of the simple set of buttons that Harley traditionally makes. I know that the new TFT display requires you to have a little bit more buttons in the mix. However, they could have gotten away by borrowing the same layout as the live bar, which also has a TFT display, but simpler button layout that is a little bit more recognizable. I have concerns about the fat tires. I love the look of the fat tires, but after riding the fat boy, I realized that bikes with fat tires are not the easiest to handle and hopefully that this rides more like a Sportster 48 than a fat boy but you'll never know until you ride it. I have concerns with the exhaust. The design of the exhaust is probably the least aesthetically pleasing part of the bike. The brushed silver color does not really match with anything else already on the bike and it kind of stands out like a sore thumb. Secondly, if you had a passenger in the back, I think they're going to have a hard time avoiding getting their right thigh burned because those exhausts are riding up high and it's very big. I have concerns with the single front disc brake. Like what the hell? After seeing and riding the Livewire and the Pan America, they both came with dual disc Brembo brakes. I for sure thought that the new Sportster S would come with the Brembo dual disc brake, but instead we get the same treatment that we get before, which is a single disc brake that is not even Brembo. Perhaps the decision was made to keep the base price down, but I feel like Harley missed the home run by not giving the dual disc brake treatment. And lastly, I have concerns with the base price of $15,000 US. Now in Canada, it's advertised as 18,000 Canadian dollars and with the fees and the tax all included, it's about 23,000 Canadian dollars, which is dangerously close to the Milwaukee 8 Big Twin Softail territory. Unlike the Pan America, which offers a whole new riding experience, Sportster S is still a cruiser. And I feel like people who can afford to buy a 15,000 US dollar cruiser, most people would, will opt to pay a few extra dollars to go for the soft tails. Now, that doesn't mean the new Sportster S will flop on sales. I actually think this bike will do fairly well and help Harley Davidson bring in new first time Harley Davidson owners from either the sports or naked bike community. I'm just saying I do not see many of the Evo Sportster owners like myself trading up for the Sportster S when the price point is very similar to the Milwaukee 8 Softtails. But 
Nevertheless, I am excited for the first chapter of the new Sportster book. If you're curious to see what the new iron may look like with Revolution Max, they kind of sneaked it in into the reveal video. The footage here shows a part of the handlebar which seems to have the same button arrangement as the Sportster S. The mini fairing that looks very similar to Iron 1200. You can also see a different fuel tank design from the Sportster S model. The second footage here shows the rear fender with the traditional dual rear shock that looks a little bit different than the current Sportster. So it might be an upgrade already. And the last footage that shows the bottom of the Revolution Max engine with the mid controls and the 212 chrome exhaust. And this is important because the layout of the pipes are identical to the concept bike that Harley sent out as a picture for survey last year, which back then people assumed that design was already for the new Sportster. So I think this solidifies the prediction that the Sportster Iron 975 or Iron 1250 may have similar resemblance as the concept design picture that was sent out a while ago. Now, as time goes on, I will do more coverage of Revolution Max engine bikes because I am personally interested about these bikes and hopefully I can get a chance to ride this Sportster S when it arrives into my local dealership. Please like and subscribe if you wish to see more of my content and more coverage of the Revolution Max Sportsters. And like always, ride safe, ride prepared, ride on. Peace.